so uh, what we are going to cover today so we have uh, you know i'm going to start with things like what we have seen in the market what we have seen uh, you know based on our experience with devops people within our own organization within our partner ecosystem as well as customers uh, we have seen in most of the devops deployment that security comes as an afterthought and that's what we realize is a big uh, problem because according to according to uh, us security should be something which should come on day one and not as an afterthought and any deployment that comes up uh, whether using ansible or any other uh, automation tool should include security from the start so we are going to have a quick look why uh, you know security as an afterthought is a problem and then i'm going to go over some of the interest pki components including certificate authority gateway a uh, ca gateway which is our api interface so i'm going to have a quick introduction around that and finally we will be diving a bit deep uh, with the demonstration of using ca gateway ansible module that entrust has developed and how you can leverage that with other ansible modules offered by f5 to have a completely automated deployment of f5 uh, load balancer and uh, you know uh, with the uh, cryptographic based credentials uh, issued at the deployment itself so security in devops is not an afterthought and you know we completely stand by that so uh, whenever we use any devops uh, tool like ansible or terraform or, or for that matter any other tool security should not come as a step 2 it should rather be step 1 at the time of deployment of the network components at the time of deployment of the application itself we should be issuing secure and really secure credentials to those network components and those uh, credentials should not only be uh, you know issued they should be also manageable so we have we have seen this gap in out of the box playbooks that uh, that are generally used by various enterprises where the deployment of the infrastructure happens first and then credentials are issued next the major gap in this is the, your application is not secure on day one second thing you might end up missing on those details missing on those security components at a later stage so yeah so there is a very high probability that an application or a server which has been deployed by one of the automation tools they are pretty much prone to be left out at some stage so that's where uh, you know our uh, our components including our ansible module comes into picture and we will see how so before before diving into uh, you know the ansible playbook itself or before diving into our ansible module i would like to spend a couple of minutes explaining what our uh, enter ca gateway is and how it typically works ca gateway uh, is a restful interface it's a rest uh, api based gateway in front of uh, our certificate authorities and when i say our uh, certificate authority it can be enter certificate authorities like our public ssl or private uh, tls cas it can be something like you know third party cas like microsoft aws and a lot more connectors are coming in future so this provides a single consistent api based interface to access all those cas at the back end Uh, this is a swagger uh, based open api spec that i have opened here so it provides it gives you a visibility into what all apis that we have so you know apart from apis like doing enrollment or the requisition of the certificate itself uh, there are apis which are available to acquire the metadata so for example certificate authority so it provides and as i said earlier ca gateway can front multiple cas it's a multi tenant application so this is one api which provides a complete visibility into all the back end cas the ca gateway is working with so if you know if you see one of the examples uh, the certificate api uh, gateway api is a get uh, it's a get based rest api and once i execute you will see a list of certificate authorities which are running behind this particular ca gateway instance right now this particular ca gateway has been configured to use just one uh, one of the cas and that's what we are going to use in today's demonstration 
Uh, there are other APIs, uh, you know, to view the certificate details, to perform actions on those certificates. So you can, uh, you know, having a certificate issued doesn't, it's not the end of security, it's basically the start. We, we feel that a complete control on those identities and these identities in case of PKI, they are, uh, you know, they are PKI based X509 certificates. So an ability to control them, ability to revoke an identity at some stage is one of the keys in maintaining the security in the long run. So you can use this API based interface as part of your application or as part of you know, another tool which is provide, provided by Entrust PKI uh, to perform those actions. So these are the, uh, you know, these are the set of APIs which are made available as soon as you have a working CA gateway instance running. And you can use the CA gateway for multiple or different type of certificate authorities. Uh, another tool is uh, Certificate Hub. So it, it is a graphical user face, in, a user interface based tool which provides another layer on top of the CA gateway. It gives a complete visibility into all the certificates that have been issued by our ecosystem or our PKI, as well as it has a capability to discover external certificates as well. So you can, you can go into certificates and you will see all the certificates which have been issued listed here, and you can perform different actions, including uh, renewal of the keys, uh, revocation of the certificate, and you can use this tool to even automate the deployment of certificates to the endpoints. With this, uh, I would like to go back to our actual, uh, actual problem, where uh, you know I, I have this F5 instance running on my environment, and this is this you know this is basically a basic F5 installation that comes up, right? So I have configured a virtual server in this F5. And I'm using the pre-configured certificate profile that comes along with any F5 installation. And I'm using this client SSL profile, which basically is nothing but a self-signed certificate. So we have we have seen multiple uh, you know multiple cases where end users are using self-signed certificate. And while they are easy to generate and they are free of cost, there there are multiple issues which are associated with uh, identities which are self-signed or are expired. So, uh, you know, you, you rarely have any kind of control. It's really tough to manage them. And uh, there's always a concern of certificates. Brought. So you might end up in a situation where there are thousands of certificates and keys in your ecosystem and you do not have any visibility or control into them. So with this basic configuration, and I have a Apache server running at the back end, and I'm going to demonstrate a typical F5 use case. Uh, where you know we are doing an SSL offloading, so I have an Apache uh, server at the backend, and F5 is doing the SSL offloading, and then passing on the request to uh, the backend server. And I will show you what happens when you run uh, with this particular uh, configuration. So I have this machine. Uh, yeah. So as I as I you know just said, so since it is running with a self signed certificate, and you can see the browser itself is not trusting that identity. And the reason is the certificate which is being used by this particular website here is not being issued by a trusted source. So browser doesn't really trust it. Browser doesn't know where the certificate is coming from. And this particular warning, it gives a clear picture to the end user that the identity that you are using is not secure and you need to actually bypass this through some manual intervention. And same is true for any expiring credentials which you might have in your system. So while I can proceed to uh, this particular website, but it will always remain a non-secure endpoint. So how we are going to fix this? This is what we have done. So uh, we have created an Ansible module for CA Gateway, and that Ansible module is available for download from our uh, you know, trusted care system, and you can you can request the uh, availability of that. But uh, that Ansible module talks to our CA gateway uh, over the rest, and it provides a mechanism where you can, in a in a completely automated way, you can like, acquire those certificates from CA gateway. So some of the YAML files, and you know, as you, uh, 
I'm I'm really uh, hoping that you guys are aware of how Ansible playbooks are structured. So this is this is the variables file that I've created. So basically, I need to provide few details like what is the uh, you know what is the big IP uh, address as well as the username and password for your big IP, and then you can define other parameters which are more specific to F5. So you can provide what virtual server IP address you want. Uh, you can provide the port which you are using, and then there are few details which are needed to interact with the CA gateway itself. So you need to tell the script what is the CA you want to use. So I'm going to use our public SSL CA. So that is identified with this particular CA, uh, uh, you know, CA name, CA gateway ECS. So I'm going to use that. And I'm going to uh, add or use the backend Apache server as one of the pool members. So with these basic variables set, let's go and have a look at the actual playbook. And this is the playbook which is using uh, you know CA gateway Ansible tasks as well as some of the tasks which are provided by F5. So uh, you know I'm I'm going to talk about a bit about the CA gateway Ansible module. So here, yeah. the top two tasks are the one which will help you in acquiring the certificates from CA Gateway. If you look at the first one, which is you know generating the CSR, I am using an existing Ansible module, which is OpenSSL, to generate a new key, and that new key will be saved in uh, you know in this directory it, as, with the name result.key. I am going to generate a new certificate signing request, the CSR itself. And I'm specifying what is the subject of the certificate I want. And since Apache web server does a verific, uh, you know, host name verification, that's why we need to make sure that the host name is available in the certificate. So right now I'm using the host name of my Apache server as the certificate name. The next task is uh, the CA Gateway Ansible module itself. So this is uh, this is where you know we will be generating the certificate uh, using the CA ID, which uh, you know uh, which is used to talk to the CA gateway and a particular CA profile. So this is a standard uh, OV kind of certificate that you can issue via our ECS uh, SSL uh, portal. And then uh, you need to define few things like you know CA gateway is a is a secure endpoint and you need a client cert and key. To talk to that, so you need to define where your credentials are. So server dot cert and server dot key are my credentials, which are saved locally. And I'm going to request a new certificate of type X five nine from my uh, ECS CA. And ECS is our uh, you know service for providing uh, public trust, publicly trusted SSL certificates. So this is the task you need to include to acquire the certificate. And at this point. Uh, you know we are we are we are basically done with what you need to configure for CA gateway. Rest all the uh, tasks that I have defined below, they are available from F5 itself. So what we are doing is uh, we are taking those certificate and key and we are pushing them into F5. Uh, we are pushing into the F5 certificate list. Uh, we are pushing the certificate. We are pushing the key. We are pushing the CA chain. So those three uh, things, the certificate key and chain itself, can be used to create a SSL, uh, SS, uh, sorry, client SSL profile. So I'm using all the three things, the cert, key, and chain, to create a new profile. And that new profile, I'm making that profile as a child of our client SSL profile itself. Um, and then finally, uh, I'm going to use this profile along with the node pool in my virtual server setup. So, uh, you know, I have a virtual server created. I'm going to use my existing node pool. I'm going to use the newly acquired certificates uh, along with that particular node pool. And uh, at the end, we expect that the load balancer has been configured to use the certs which have been issued from the public SSL CA of interest uh, via CA gateway. So with this done, you just need to, and this is just you know a one-time configuration that you need to do. You can go ahead and execute this particular playbook, and this will go over all the steps one by one. It has already created a CSR. It is now in the process of requesting a certificate from the CA gateway. 
Yep. So, with with end of this task, we have acquired the certificate from CA Gateway. It has copied the private key to FI. It has copied the cert that we got from CA Gateway to FI. It has copied the CA certificate chain to FI. It has created the client SSL profile, and then finally the virtual server that we were using earlier. It has been configured to use uh, those uh, client SSL profile and the node. So if I go back, uh, if I go back into, uh, I'm going to just refresh the same URL, and let's see the difference. As you can see, it's not an unsecure URL anymore. If you look into the details of the certificate, it says it's valid. It has been issued by Entra Certificate Authority. It is valid till 2022, so it's basically valid for one year from today. And this is a secure uh, website which can be trusted by the browsers, which can be trusted by your customers, and which can be trusted by any third-party application which is leveraging your environment. So with this, uh, you know, with a single command, basically you have been able to completely automate. Uh, the whole dev secops process you have you have been uh, able to able to include the security in the deployment step itself so as soon as your network and application components are deployed they will be secure right and if we go back into the peg ip uh, portal as well so you can see the virtual server instead of uh, the original client ssl it is now leverage, leveraging the client profile that we have created the certificates uh, that we issued uh, they uh, yeah, so they are available here so all the certs that were issued they are available in the certificate manager of fi so yeah that was that was the demonstration at a very high level these are the key takeaways that we feel so uh, you know with, with this particular uh, ansible module in in place we feel that the journey from your regular devops process to a devsecops is much easier than you think and if you have the right tools and right support available it can be incorporated at bare minimum cost and uh, you know uh, effort another thing is that a secure devops is not just about putting a strong identities but ability to manage them as well so the complete ecosystem which is offered by entrust pki including certificate hub it provides a visibility into those credentials which have been issued and it provides a capability where you as an administrator have a complete control in terms of when to revoke or when to renew the identity on an endpoint and uh, finally entrust pki offers a complete suite of applications including our add-ons uh, to things like ansible and we are working uh, you know to expand that integration with other uh, tools in devops ecosystem so with uh, entrust pki does offer all uh, you know all the required tools to have your devsecops ready and with minimum effort so this is the end of today's session and please feel free to reach out to us if you have any question.